welcome back to my YouTube channel. Uh, today we're going to make a project. This is a kind of a, a new one I've been playing with, and so uh, uh, I call this a lollipop spinner, and it's a uh, it consists of three circles inside of each other that all turn independently of each other. And uh, for this project, we're going to need a piece of three thirty second music wire or piano wire. These are uh, products that you buy at a hobby store. Uh, we're going to need a piece of eighth inch brass tubing. The 332nd wire will slide down inside the brass tubing. We need a little package of what they call set collars. Uh, they're 332nd in diameter. They'll go onto our, our rod right here. And we're going to need some miscellaneous glass and uh, we're going to go from there. So I've got it kind of uh, set up here a little bit. I'll just bring in my drawing board real quick and just show you what this is going to look like. We're going to start here like with our with our hanger coming down here straight down here like this. Here we'll have a hanger on the end here with a ball bearing swivel. Starting about right here in the middle here, we're going to make a a three inch circle with a one inch around. Then we're going to come out here a half an inch. We're going to make another circle, and we're going to come out an inch and a half here. And we're going to go out another half an inch here, and we're going to finally end up with a great big circle out here on the edge, and it's going to be two inches. Come around here, and these will be have the the brass tubing is going to be in between these, right right in here, and it'll turn on this piece of uh, music wire as it comes down here. So this will make a little more sense when we get ready to start to put it together. So the next thing we need to do is that we need to draw us a plan. So uh, I'll go offline real quick. We'll get it. We'll get our uh, paper set up here to draw this out. I'm going to draw all of these circles out on the same uh, build uh, sheet so that we can build them all together. We'll start with this larger one on the outside because the uh, brass tubing that we're going to run down through here, we're going to take and we're going to cut it as we as we use it. And then we'll be able to move it as we move on down. I'll show you how we're going to do that as we move along. So anyway, this will be a fun project. These all work independent of each other. So when you put them outside in the in the light breeze, you get them all turning all kinds of different directions. And it's kind of a kind of a fun project. Or you could fin fix them uh, on an angle uh, permanently to the shaft, whatever you decide you wanted to do with it. So uh, we'll be back in a minute. I'll get that set up to make the drawing. And then we'll come back and we'll get ready to uh, get us a pattern to play with this. Right, so I'm back here. We got this ready to go here now. So we've got our, this is the uh, piece of paper we're going to make our drawing on right here. Up here at the top here, I've got a, just a piece of masking tape going across here. So it, it hinges up and can slide back. So we're going to slide this back. And because this is a big project, I've taken some manila folders and I fold, I've just taped them together here to create the, the, uh, uh, material that we're going to use for our pattern we're going to draw right on here so I'm just going to set this underneath here and I'm going to take and tape it down just a couple of little spots here so it doesn't move on us so we'll get this out here and we'll tape it down here come over here and get a couple more okay now between the drawing paper that we're going to draw on and the our pattern paper, we're going to put in some carbon paper. And this carbon paper, you want to put it in the carbon side down so it'll transfer to our pattern paper. So I'm just going to take and set this in here like this. Like here we go. All right. Pull our drawing paper down tight. Pull it down so it gets all the air out of it. Okay, I'm going to tape this down here on the bottom here. Better put a couple more here. We don't want that to move. This is a pretty big job. So we want to be sure it stays round for us too. Okay, so if any of you guys have watched any of my other videos, you know that for the circles here, I'm just going to use the ruler. This is the ruler I have right here. It's got little holes drilled in it all the way along here. Every quarter inch has got a hole drilled in it. Where you see the lines coming down, those are all marked at one inch. And this is used like a compass. I take a push pin that I'm using for build, 
And uh, because this hole down here has gotten worn out, I'm going to move up to the one inch mark right here. So we're going to come right here and we're just going to set this right in here like this. We're going to push this in. Push that down. And then the first circle we're going to do, we're going to, we said we we're going to make it three inches inside. So we need to make this, find the halfway part of it. This is right here, one and a half inches. And we're just going to take and we're going to take and we're going to make our circle right here at one and a half inches. There we go. We don't need to quite push to quite that hard. And we're going to make this one an inch wide. So we're going to come here at one inch right here. Whoops. And then we're going to make it a half an inch space in between it before we get to the next one. So it's right here. And that one here, we're going to make these an inch and a half wide. So we come down here to an inch and a half. Come and make a circle right here. And then we're going to leave another half an inch. Come around. And then the last one is going to be two inches. So it's going to be out to here. So this would be the outside of our lollipop spinner right here. And we're going to break this into 12 segments. So uh, the first thing we're going to do, kind of got a little carried away there. First thing we're going to do, we're going to take our carpenter square. This is the one we've been using for all our projects. We're going to set it in here. We're going to line it up right on the center point here. And we're going to draw the line down here. That's going to be our center line. I'm going to bring this little square in here. Come across here. Come across here. So that gives us our line up here. Just like that. Then if you take a 60 degree triangle, which is one right here, 60 degrees right here. If you take and you set that in here like this. Set that in here right here. This will break that up into 12 segments for us. Put one right there. Move it over here. Be sure you keep your T square or your square straight on the back back of your work table. That one goes right there. Pull this one over here to here. Almost messed myself up there and didn't have that straight. That one goes there. And now these, you turn it this way. Goes right in here. This one here turns over here. Goes right in here like this. And this breaks us all the way up into, into 12 equal pieces of pie. So we'll get lots of different colors. We're just going to mix this all up as far as a whole bunch of different colors goes. Uh, if you wanted to, you could go ahead and, you know, make some kind of a pattern design in here with different different colored glass, just uh, alternate them or whatever you want to do with your glass. So that would be something that you could work out on that to make the uh, project kind of your own. We've got one more right here we need to fix. And we'll get this one in here right here. Make sure that's down tight. All right, and we need we got one right here that we need to put in here. Oh, 
Okay, so that creates our pattern right here. Now we're going to do a couple of things with this here. I'm going to put a little piece of tape on that right there so that we don't mess that up a little bit more. That's fine. It's okay. What we're going to do here, we're going to number all these pieces. Now this looks pretty complicated right now, but when we cut it apart, it won't look so bad. So we're going to start out here with this one here. This will be number one, number two, Number three, I'll go offline. I'm going to number these all. We don't need to watch me make numbers on them. We're going to come all the way down. We're going to number them all down, even to this small one right here. So I'll be back in a second. All right, I'm back. So we got everybody numbered. Now, now the next thing we're going to do, before we take this apart, uh, I, want to, I want to measure the direction or mark the direction of this because I want this glass to all be running up and down. And so the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to just take my... Uh, square here and I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to draw a down line here and I'll draw it on all three of these pieces and then I'm just going to put a little arrow here that means that's going to be the up direction that I want the glass to come just like that so we're going to mark all of these as they come around I guess we're going to guys going to continue to be a problem there we'll just take them out there If you don't do this, then you're going to end up with some patterns going sideways, some up and down. This just makes the job kind of look a little bit nicer. Uh, if you're limited on glass, you can't probably do that because uh, some of these, as you come around here, these are going to be almost straight up and down. As you come on around, uh, you just may not have enough glass uh, to, uh, to make sure that the, the grain goes all the same. But if you can, it just makes the job look a little bit nicer. I'll go offline. I'm going to go ahead and put the arrows in all of these, and then when we come back, We'll, we'll untape this and we'll show you the pattern and then we'll start to cut up. We'll build this outside one first and then we'll take it, we'll, keep, we'll move in as we move in. So uh, we'll be back in a second here. Okay, so we're back here. We got everybody with our directional arrows on it now. So I just marked this as the top of our project. So now we'll take and we'll pull this off here and we'll get, to our, get down to our pattern. So it's kind of caught underneath the sandwich between the the build sheet that we're going to build on and the uh, and the pattern so that way it doesn't move on us so we'll pull that out of the way get our carbon paper out of the way Now here's our pattern. So what we'll do, we'll cut all these pieces out now. Now here again, I'm not going to use any uh, any cutting shears as far as uh, lead lines here uh, because we're going to do another one of our build and stack things. So I'm just going to cut it with a regular pair of scissors and then we'll take them with this grind them to fit them as we go around. So uh, you notice here it didn't go where I had my masking tape. It didn't uh, transfer very well. So I'll have to go ahead and fix that so we get, don't have any issues there. So uh, uh, I'm going to just I'll cut out the upper ring first, so we'll have 12 pieces to work with, and then we'll come in and we'll start, uh, we'll put down our, our worksheet right here, and we're going to build, and we'll start right here on the outside edge, and we'll go ahead and we'll start to build this. So I'll be back in a minute, I'll get that all taken care of, get that pattern cut up, and uh, then we'll come back and I'll show you how we're going to lay down our first uh, piece of lead to go around here to create the inside circle for our largest ring. So we'll be back. All right, I'm back. I got all our pattern pieces cut up. So we'll take and we'll just move these out of the way right now. And uh, we'll go ahead and uh, get ready to put down our inner piece of uh, lead U came. We're going to use the, uh, the RU70 came. It'll go in here and the smooth side will be facing in. So we'll have a, a channel for our glass to slide into. So I'll show you how we're going to do that, how we're going to, build, how we're going to bend these curves to make them to come together. The curves actually are going to come together right here at this joint right here is where they'll come. So we'll make a half a curve to go around here and then a half a curve to go around here. And in here is where we're going to take and we're going to run our, our brass tubing. This brass tubing is going to run up and down inside here. And it's going to be hidden between a couple of pieces of H came. And I'll show you how, how, to, how we're going to do that as soon as I get ready to get to that point. So we'll be back in a minute. 
Um, we'll get ready to, to put our uh, you came around here and uh, then we'll get ready to put cut some glass and stick them in here and we'll go from there. All three of these disc or, or, or center sections or circles are going to be made the same way. So we're only, for the video purposes to keep it so it doesn't run too long. We're just going to build this outside one. But all of these, the center one and this next little tiny one here, they will all be built exactly the same way. And then I'll show you how we'll put them all together. So we'll be back and uh, we'll get ready to cut some glass and put this together. All right, we're about back and we're going to get ready. We're going to put in this inside you came for the largest circle right here. And it measures just about 10 inches across from here to here. This area in here is our gap between the next one here. So don't get confused on that. So it's about 10 inches. If you watch my other videos, you notice I always find some kind of a prop to help form this to get started so we get a nice smooth curve. And in this case, the bottom of a five gallon paint can, which I happen to have one right here, is perfect. And so we want to we want to take the flat side of our cane. This is the this is the RU70. Uh, it's got a, a crown on the top with a flat back on it. And you're just gonna we're just gonna take it like right here, gonna eyeball this in the center. And we're just gonna take and bring this around, all the way around here. And I'm gonna bring it around here. And I'm gonna let it overlap right here. Let it overlap itself just like that. Now, when I let this go, it'll be a little bit springy, but that's okay. We'll go ahead and make that adjustment when we get ready to put it on our board. So that gives us our, our initial bend right here. So now we'll pull this away, get rid of our paint can. And we're going to put this in here. We'll start up at the top here. We're going to st I told you we're going to start right here on each one of these. So... Uh, We'll bring this down here like this on around. You could put this into a whole loop here. I'm going to split it right here because it makes it easier to put it together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come right here. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get some pins here. I'll try to stay out of the camera there because this is, this is so big around. I got the camera way up high. So I'm going to come right to this intersection right here and I'm going to put a pin. This is the inside right here. Put a pin here. Put one right there. That one's kind of soft. Let's move over here a little bit ways. One here. One right here. There we go. Bring this around. Just like that. Gonna let this overlap here just a little bit. Come here and stick one on the outside there. Bring this around. Keep an eye on it here. Make sure it stays where you want it. Bring it on around and just line it up on the inside of this line right here. By pre-forming or, or pre-bending this, it makes it easier to get a nice curve on this. I'm going to bring this on around, just like that. Okay, and now this one here is going to go on around to here. But I want to bring this just I want to bring this in here just a little bit right here. The ends here always take a little bit of fooling around with here to make sure that they make a smooth transition right here. Okay, I'm going to take my lead dikes here with the smooth side. I'm going to come right in here, right up against my line right here. And I'm going to trim that there. Push this in here. I'm going to do the same thing right here. Trim this right here. Take and tape, take and pin that down real good. 
pull this in against our line. Okay, now this one here, we're going to take it, we'll take and cut up here again a straight edge on it. And we're going to butt it right into here. So this will make a nice connection. This area right here, if you're afraid that's going to push out, take a piece of your little form wood right here and push this in here like that. And just take and pin it. So we can be sure we got these two lined up where we want them. Okay, bring this on around. Take some time with this because you want this circle to be actually a circle. We don't want it to be oblong. Bring it on around. Okay, now when it starts to get up here where you're going to you're going to get it to overlap here keep an eye on that push that up make sure it stays flush right here you don't want this up in the air just like that now see we're going to put this at a joint right here so this will actually be hidden you won't really see that mark when we get it when we get it together here okay come on around here When you get to this mark right here, take your pin and take and mark this right here. And I'm intentionally going to mark it a little bit long so that when I cut it, we can get it to fit in there just right because I don't want it to, uh, I don't want it to uh, have a gap in it. Take your time when you do this. Slow and steady is better than to cut it too much and then you got to figure out how you're going to piece it back in here. Still a little bit more. This one here is not quite straight. It's kind of up and down. So I need to straighten this up just a little bit. There we go. Bring that around so it just butts in right there. Here again. Take another little piece of your form wood. Just push it in here so you've got your line showing right here. So you can pin that. That looks nice and tight. Okay. Looks good, looks good. That all looks good right here. Okay, now what we're going to do, we're going to go offline real quick and we're going to get our soldering iron out and we're going to tack solder these together to make a circle. And then what we're going to do, we're going to come back in here. I'm going to mark this right here. I'm going to mark this right here and then we're going to take right here where this mark is right here. I'm going to get my pen to work here. Right here. Here and right here. We're going to drill a eighth inch hole through the U-came. And this is where our 
brass rod will come through here to create our spinner effect. We'll cut this off uh, just about right there. We'll cut it off about that long and we'll slide that through and then we'll be sure that it's straight up and down and we can tack solder that in so that it stays in place. So I'll show you how we're going to do that in a minute. So we'll get our siren iron fired up and then we'll get this together here and then we'll come back and we'll uh, put our uh, put our holes in here and then we can put our, our uh, uh, brass tubing in here. Then what we can do is we'll go ahead and we'll go ahead and start to cut our pieces of glass and put them on around. The outside edge is easier to do because uh, you're going to go up against the glass. So this one here is a little bit trickier. Once we get this soldered, after I get this tack soldered here, I can take it back over our, our uh, paint can and push it down to make sure that it stays nice and straight. So if, it, if you've got a little bit of a problem here, uh, don't panic too much on that. So we'll get we'll get the soldering iron out, get it plugged in, and uh, we'll be back and get that soldered up real quick. Okay, I got the iron soldered, uh, soldering iron plugged in. So uh, what we're going to do, we're going to tack solder these two right here. And I took my little stainless steel brush and I shined those up a little bit. So we're just going to take and flex them right here. Flex it right there. Whoops, I didn't want to do that. Push that in there a little bit. Here we go. So I'm just going to tin my iron just a little bit here. I'm just going to hold it right here. Just like that. Tin, it, tin the iron. There we go. Okay, now we got all these pins in here. So we're going to take them all out now real quick. Pull them all out. Slide that out of the way. I'm going to turn this over and we're just going to tack these real quick on this side too. So we'll just keep that together there. Just tin your iron again, just hold it on here real quick. Kid oak. So now you got the you got your circle together. I'll go and stick this on my uh, uh, barrel now. Make sure it's perfectly round. And then when we come back, I'm going to show you. Uh, we'll, I'll take and drill the two holes in here, and then we'll come back and we'll show you how we're going to put this back in here. So we'll be back. All right, we got our ring put back in place here now. So our uh, brass tubing here, we want it to stick above these two lines here. So I'm just going to just eyeball this maybe uh, three-eighths of an inch on this side, three-eighths of an inch over here. Uh, and then the easiest way to cut this is to take uh, your uh, X-Acto knife. Let's see if I can do that right here. Take your X-Acto knife and just lay it on here and just go back and forth with this real quick. And that'll cut, that'll cut that off. Uh, sometimes after you do that, just take the tip of your exacto knife and, and go through here and open this up so that uh, it'd be sure to let the uh, piano wire go through it. Now you can you can uh, just cut some little short pieces and put in here in here, but I've found by using this longer one. You get it. You get it to be straighter as it goes through here, and you have less binding, so this turns freer. So the the uh, your your piano wire now here will will go down inside here like this. Just like that. This needs to be opened up just a little bit more in the end there, like that. I just open this up just a little bit more down here. There we go. So now I can go slide slide through here. So what we'll do is we'll come in here like this 
and we're going to let this one here extend up here about uh, 8 to 10 inches. That'll be where we'll put our hanger right here. So that'll go right about here. So uh, to cut this piano wire, you need to use a Dremel tool with a, a carbide cutoff wheel because uh, it's very, very hard. Uh, you can't really cut this with a pair of uh, 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 pliers or, or even a pair of uh, really good uh, wire cutters. It's just too strong. So anyway, that's the way that's going to go. So this piece here is going to sit in here like this. It's going to come down here. It's going to fit in that hole here, and it's going to fit in this hole right here. And it's going to stick over just about that much on each end. And that gives us our, our setup for our, our spinner. And like I said, and when we're done with this, we're going to cut this off here and cut it off here. And we'll use this piece here for the next size inside. And then we'll cut it off here and cut it off here and use this last piece for in here. So just by leaving it long right now, it, keep, it keeps them lined up better. Otherwise, you can get this one off maybe a sixteenth or an eighth of an inch over here. And when you, when you put it, when you hang it, it'll be bound up and this, this outside ring won't spin around real freely. So uh, you kind of lose the uh, spinner effect uh, when it's out in, the, in a light breeze. So anyway, uh, we'll come back and we'll get ready to uh, put some glass around here. Uh, I will, I will put the uh, couple pattern pieces down and cut them real quick just to show everybody in case this is the first time you're going to be watching it. I'll also go offline and uh, take and cut this down for us so we'll have, uh, we'll have this uh, about the length we want it. So uh, we'll be back in a minute. Okay, so we're back. So it's time to cut some glass here. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time cutting glass because you guys probably are all familiar with that. Uh, so uh, I'm just going to use, to use a, uh, a regular glass cutter here. Have a little bit of cutting oil that I like to put it in here. And the patterns here, they're just stuck on there with a regular little glue stick because uh, they're not on there temporarily. They're just on there temporarily. So to, to cut one of these out, uh, I'm just going to start like right here. Just bring it down here. Just take and snap that off. And then just take and cut this right around the radius here. Around the radius there, you'll probably want to use your, you probably want to use your uh, running pliers to, to, to take and snap that off. And then out here, you just come around the outside edge here. So it doesn't take very long to make this one here. Now I take that on the grinder and I grind that back to match our pattern here. So I'll just do one more here real quick. Uh, if you're not if you're not real good at getting a straight edge here, just take a ruler and set it on here, and just go in here like that. Bring it up, and then just take and snap that off. So anyway, there's a whole bunch of ways to cut glass. You can push pull. Uh, there's all kinds of cutters. Uh, I have uh, the grip grip ones. There's some that are just uh, like pencils, all types of them. So we'll just do these last two real quick here so uh, all of you will get the idea of this. If you're afraid to snap it by hand, uh, just use your running pliers. Uh, a lot of people just use those all the time. And, uh, you know, whatever, whatever you're comfortable with uh, works good. Here again, when, you, when you're cutting glass, you don't need to push real, real hard. Cutting oil is helpful, though. It helps your, save the life of your cutting, cutting wheel, which is really a scoring wheel. And uh, uh, it just makes it cut a little bit easier. If you hear it kind of grinding or crunching, if it, uh, you definitely need to put some oil on it. See, it should be nice and quiet. Because you're just basically scoring the glass. You're not really cutting it. So we'll do this last one real quick here. So after you get the circle made with the lead, the rest of this is pretty straightforward. Uh, like I said with the circle there, we split that on the sides. Uh, I've made these things uh, both ways where we've, 
where we just use one piece and go all the way around. And uh, I'm not so sure if I don't like that way better. So uh, when you get when we get ready to try this, uh, you can experiment with whether you like to go make just one piece of lead or split it for two. Uh, that's kind of up to you. Uh, when we when we do make this though, the outside lead is easier to do when you split it by two because uh, you're going to have to drill the holes in it to match up. All right, so that's enough of, enough glass cutting here. Here's our Here's our pieces that we cut, so we'll get that out of the way here. I've had a couple little boards here kind of covering that up. So I'll come back. Uh, we'll take and grind these down. I'll come back, and I'm going to show you what we're going to do here to get started. And uh, then we'll come on around here off camera. All right, we've got our uh, glass all matched up to our pattern now. So this is how this is going to go here. So we need some way to hide this right here, but we need some place for the glass to go. So what we're going to do, we're going to take, this is the uh, uh, RH9. It's a, it's a high heart came, and it's going to fit right around our eighth inch brass tube. It's going to go just like this. Make sure you don't get them up on top of each other. Make sure they're, they're down even with each other, right, like that. And we're going to take and we'll put number one in here like this. It just slides in here like that. You don't want to push it hard because you don't want it to, you don't want it to make this go crooked. So just bring it up and just, uh, just kind of kiss it just like that. We're going to take a piece of our old U came here, push this in here, make sure that's where you want it right there. Take and we'll pin it. Another piece of H came over here. And you notice that we cut short here because this U came is going to go all the way around the outside edge. If you don't cut that short, there'll be no place for that came to go. And um, then you'll have a problem getting it wrapped around it. This one here is just a little bit too long. There we go. So we get that stuck in here. Every once in a while, take your rod here and pull it up and down inside your brass tube. Make sure that it's still free. You don't want it to get pinched in there. The reason I said that this one here kind of pushed that over a little bit. And I don't want it. I don't want it to get pushed over against that. This one here is going to slide in here just like that. Here again, we take a piece of our old U came right here. Stick it in here. And the reason I'm doing these two first is because I want this here to get lined up where I want it. Then we'll put another piece of H came right here. So as you can see, as we get, once you get this circle made, you can see this is pretty easy to put together. It's just getting the circle made, it makes it a little bit tough. But uh, after you play with that for a while, uh, it comes out pretty easily. Except it's a good idea if you make sure you get your glass in the U came here, which I didn't. There we go. I'm trying to stay out of the picture here, so so I can, don't want to get in the way here. There we go. All right, there we go. So that's the first two we got going. Now we'll come down here to the bottom. We'll do the same thing. We'll take our two pieces of H came. Put them in here to hide our tubing. Make sure our tubing, push our tubing down here so it's sticking through. There it is, right here. We'll insert our piece of glass right here. Get an old piece of U came. The reason you want to use the U came here, if you don't, you're allowed to chip your glass and you won't notice it too much when it's on the flat board here. But when you paint it up, you'll see it right away and uh, you won't be happy with the result on that. So we'll just take and pin this one more time. Come over here on this other side and we'll do the same thing. Slide that over. Make sure it lines up. That looks good. Take and pin it again. Put your H came here. 
theoretically, if you, if we did these pie pieces right, every one of these that go all the way around is actually the same size. So I've made these before where I where I have just actually made one one piece of one pattern for one segment here and just moved it around as I went around. Uh, that's especially easy to do if you're not worried about the direction of the glass. Or for in some cases, uh, some people don't care what the direction of the glass looks like. Uh, they'll just cut one piece of pattern, cut it for all the way around. But uh, I want to kind of make this all go the same direction. Some of the glass we're using doesn't even have a direction. It's just clear. Or, I mean, it's not clear. It just doesn't have a pattern on it. Uh, like glue chip has a pattern, but you don't follow it too much. The water glass does go up and down. You can see it here. But uh, we're going to move on around with that. So that looks really nice. So we're going to move on around with that. So uh, I'll go ahead and cut the rest of these offline when I get when I get done with them. We'll come back and show you how we're going to wrap this on the outside here. And then we'll go ahead and solder it all up. And that'll be our first ring. And then we'll go down and we'll start on this inside one. All the rings, like I said before, are going to be made exactly the same way. Like this loop right here. If you want to, you can make the loop all in one if you want to. Just stop it over here and start it over here. Come all the way around and stop it over here. Or you can cut it in two like we did. Whatever, whatever is the easiest for you. On the outside now, we're going to definitely stop it here because what we're going to do, we're going to make a pre-bend in it. And then here we're going to drill a hole and we're going to slide it over here to come around and then we'll trim it to fit here. So I'll show you how to do that. It's a little bit tricky, but uh, it's pretty easy. The inner loop is the hardest one to make because you have nothing to go against. This one on the outside is easy because we're going to lay our uh, we're going to lay our U came up against it as we bend it around. So we'll do a real light preliminary bend on it, and then we'll go ahead and we'll wrap it around here. So we'll be back in a little while. I get this filled in here, and uh, we'll go ahead and uh, put the outside wrapping on it, and then we'll go ahead and solder it up real quick, and we'll be done with the first one. All right, we're back. We got all our. Um segments cut here now and we got them all leaded in here so now it's time to put our u came around the outside edge here so we need to figure out how big to do it we're gonna we're gonna split it right here at the edges here so uh, i borrowed this uh cloth tape from my wife she uses it for her quilting so we're just gonna take and we're gonna take it in here we're gonna set this in here about a half an inch beyond where we're gonna go and i'm just gonna go around the outside edge here with it come around here I want to come past this a little bit so I have a little bit of extra here. So right about here looks like a good place to quit. So it looks like about 24 and a half inches long is what we're going to need. So we'll, pe we'll cut a piece of, uh, of our uh, RU70 U came at 24 and a half inches long. And then we're going to mark uh, where the center of it is, which will be 12 and a quarter inches. And uh, that'll be where we'll drill our hole for here. But we won't drill our hole until we make the bend. And uh, this uh, circle came out to be 14 and a quarter inches. So I'll find something that's fairly round. Uh, it's about that same size. And we'll, we'll bring it in here and we'll show you how we're going to bend the, uh, the initial bend for our u came. So I'll be back in a second. I'll get that set up and we'll go from there. All right, I'm back. So I cut uh, a couple of pieces of our u came now. So they're 24 and a half long. <clears throat> I marked right in the middle here. Uh, 12 and a quarter. That's where we'll draw our hole to go over our tubing here. This measured at 14 and a quarter inches. I just happened to find an old clock that I'm going to fix. One of the hands have come loose on it. And this clock happens to be 14 inches around. So that'll work just perfect. So I'm going to take this right here and I'm going to put the smooth side out and set it right in here. And I'm just going to bring it around here. Bring it down around, bring it on around here, just like that. And that gives us our initial bend. I'm going to do the other one while I'm doing this, so we'll have both of them uh, ready to go. By having something to bend it around on, it just helps you get the curve started without it being kind of jerky looking. So. Uh, it's just a good idea. You could free bend this if you wanted to. Uh, I've always liked to put something on it to make kind of a, a little template. Whatever you do, don't drill the hole before you make your bend because if you do, 
it'll want to kink right there. So instead of being smooth, it'll be kinked right where the hole is at. So here again, we're going to drill an eighth inch hole right here. It'll slide over the tubing and then we'll wrap this up. So we'll be back. I'll get those drilled. And when we come back, we'll show you. We'll just wrap it up here. Like I said before, they're going to quit right here. We'll butt them together and then we'll go ahead and we'll solder this up. And this part of the project could be done other than we're going to cut this brass tubing off here about an eighth of an inch above on each side. So we'll be back second. Okay, so we've got our um, UK drilled now. So we've, we drilled our hole in here. So now <clears throat> what we're going to do with this, we're just going to take and set it in here. Put our rod through it here. And we'll take and pull these out. So pull back about to about four of them, and this will slide down on here and going to it's going to sit in here just just exactly like that. Okay. So bring this around. Take and pin it real good. Bring this around. Use quite a few pins on this so that so that it's up here tight. You want it to really be tight against the uh, against your glass. Because this is a this is the final part of the structure as far as the circle goes. Leave these areas open here so you can get to them to solder. So don't put your pins right there and then you can't get to them and solder them. Okay, make sure that comes down real nice and tight there. Put your pins in here. Okay, now when we get down here, leave these loose just a little bit here. And we're going to take this and we're going to take it right here. And we're going to take it, we're going to mark it. We're going to split this. We're going to split this piece of H cane right here. So this ends up right in the middle of it. Right there. Then we're going to take our dikes with our flat side. And we're just going to come in here on the top. See if I can do this without getting in the picture here. Here we go. Trim that so it goes right there. This one here, we'll just take and pin it right here. We'll pin it right here. And we're going to do the same thing over here. We'll push that in tight. We'll mark it. Here again, we'll use our flat side against here. Pull that around. That one there, I cut just a little bit short. That's okay though, because we're gonna we're gonna butt the other one into it. So we'll try to do a good job butting butting the other one into it, so we don't uh, we don't get too big of a gap to solder. So that one works like that. Okay, so this one here, uh, we're gonna keep our brass tube push down here so we'll pull these out right here just like this and we'll take this one here and we'll set it in here get it lined up get it to slide on our brass tubing sometimes it's a little tricky there we go Slide that in there, push that in tight. We'll put a pin right here, one right here. And we're going to stick and start to wrap this on around. Here's what you're looking for here. You want nice connections like this where they're going to be nice and tight. You don't want to have any big gaps in there because it just makes it harder to solder. And it's not quite as strong to if you have a really nice uh, tight joint all right make sure here again like i said use use plenty of pins here push this around make sure it's up good good and tight against your glass All right, so now this one here, this is the one I cut just a little bit short, so 
I'm going to cut it maybe just a little bit long to start with so I don't mess this up. Okay, now we're going to go flat side here, here again against the came. Okay, so that's a little bit too long. Just a little bit. Now we're really getting tight here. There we go. That's what you want right there. Push that in tight. Take and pin it. Here again, what I did before, if you want to, take and push your piece of form wood in here up against it tight, and just take and push a pin in it here. That'll uh, that'll keep that to make a nice round circle as you come around. Okay, we'll go over this other side now. We'll do this, do the same thing here. Pull that in here. Mark it right so it'll butt into it. Here again, flat edge of your cutters again. Just taking just a little tiny off of here, so I want it to want it to slide in there tight, just like that. Okay, I've got I've got this not quite straight here, so it's kind of hanging up here. So I need to cut this down here. There we go. Try to get this as straight up and down as you can so you don't have it binding like that. There we go. Pull that in tight. We'll take and pin it here again. And we'll take and we'll pin it right here. And here again we'll get another little piece of our form wood. Push it in here tight so it makes a nice joint for us. All right, that's what we're looking for. Go ahead and check and make sure your your rod's still free up and down in your in your uh, brass tubing. We're going to let this brass tubing stick out on each end here just a little bit. We're going to trim it off with our Dremel about an eighth of an inch when we get it soldered in here. So we'll solder around here, around here, around here, and around here onto the brass tubing. So let's go ahead and get our um, siren iron in here, and uh, we'll go ahead and solder this up. So let me get it plugged in, and then when we come back, uh, we'll go ahead and solder this up. Okay, so we got our uh, solder iron all plugged in now, so we're going to go around and we'll solder this all up. So I'm going to take my little stainless steel brush here, and I'm going to shine up our joints here so they'll get a, a nice solder joint, knock off any oil on my fingers or any fingerprints or any oxidation that they might have. Get those pins out of the way so we can get, get our solder iron in there real good. All right. We're using a 60-40 solder. We're using a classic 100, uh, 100 uh, classic gel uh, flux. Uh, I like this one. It's water soluble, and it doesn't uh, it doesn't have any odor or it doesn't smoke. So we'll just take and put that on our joints, and we'll just take and solder this together. Okay. I'm just going to make a couple of solder joints real quick and then we'll go offline and do the rest of it. Everybody is pretty much up on soldering. So I'm going to just take and tin my iron here a little bit. I'm going to set it right in here. Solder that right there. Here again. Come back up the top here.
there we go we'll come over here and we'll do these two right here this one here is a little bit short here so I'm going to split the difference in it here I'll go offline and solder the rest of these up. Then we'll turn it over with we'll solder them also. Like I said before, we'll solder these together here. And the way we're going to do that is that we'll just take and we'll flex this right here. We'll flex it over here on the outside also. <clears throat> I'm going to just take my iron and I'm just going to tin it. And I'm just going to set it in here and then let's let it flow off of it. Just like that. And that, that solders in our brass line right now. So I'll go offline, uh, solder up both sides of this, and then when we come back, uh, I'll have it uh, all washed up, and we'll go ahead and we'll have already cut these off. I'm just going to use a, a Dremel tool with a carbide cutoff wheel, and I'm just going to come in here and cut these off at about an eighth of an inch. And then this disc here will be all done. So all we have to do is make the two inside ones. They'll go a little bit quicker than this. And then we'll put them all on our rod and we'll be done with our, our uh, vertical lollipop spinner. So hope everybody's been following along. We'll be back in a minute. Okay, so we're back here. We got it all taken care of now. So here I trim these, the tubing off here, tip off here. Uh, I went over this with my emery board. So anywhere our connections were here, I just smoothed these out. So it uh, came out very nice. So I think everything's going to come out good. So the... Uh, the next big test is see, we'll take our steel rod here and we'll insert it in here and we'll see if we did a good job as far as getting these lined up so that so that this will turn. So this should I should be able to hold this rod and this should spin freely on there. All right, so we got it turning for us. So I'm I'm holding the wire so it's not spinning. So the unit is turning on on the rod itself, and uh, that's exactly what we wanted. So now I'll go ahead and finish the uh, the other two up that go in the center. They'll be made just exactly like this one here. Kind of just go over that with your kind of make sure that's real free in there. So I think we got it. Uh, Got it lined up just exactly what we want. So when this is out in the out in the uh, a daylight or outside, and it's it's hanging for it'll be hanging from this area right here. Uh, these will turn and these will take and turn, so they'll turn like this. And then the ones in the middle will turn also, so you'll get a good idea of how this uh, spinner is going to look. So. Uh, We'll be back. We'll go ahead and make the rest of these. When we come back, I'll show you how we're going to assemble it. Uh, we're going to get ready to build this uh, uh, inner circle right here. This will be the, the second one in. Uh, this is so, so between here and here is six inches. And uh, I, I looked on the other video, the bigger one, after we got that all done, making the inner circle here using the pins and just lining up and pre-bending the, the U-came. And uh, that, uh, for a beginner, looked kind of complicated so what I thought about was a, a different idea for uh, getting this inner U came put in here for the inner circle so what I came up with was to just take a regular little piece of cardboard and uh, cut it into the size of the circle that you want in this case it's six inches across which lines up with this right here for six inches take your push pins Set them right on your line here, your six inch line. Right here like that. And just take your disc that you've cut, push it in here. And then take your pins and push them down on here onto this 
cardboard pattern. That'll get it by that'll get it right in the center where you want it. I'm still going to take my U came in in uh, and bend it uh, around something. In this case, it's a uh, it's a two pound coffee can works really nice. So I end up with a piece of uh, R RU70 U came. Uh, it's bent around for our our circle. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just set it in here just like this. And I'm going to take and we'll pin it using this cardboard as a backup and just pull your pins up against it and just pull it around like this. That way you don't have to line it up against the pins. I think this is a little bit easier to do. Come down here, push this in right here. Then bring this on around. You see, I, this is I left this long here just intentionally. So take your cutters with the flat side here, and we're just going to take and trim just a little bit off of here. Oh, that was perfect right there. So see how nice that came together right there. So that makes it a little bit easier than trying to line it up on those pins. So we can take and we can take and uh, pin this down here. Yeah, that worked out really well. So uh, no matter how long you've been playing with these, you can always find some new little trick. I think this is better than using the pins around the inside uh, because you get a perfect circle and uh, this makes a really nice joint. So uh, I'll go offline. I'm going to solder this shut right here and uh, then I'm going to come back on and I'll build the rest of this circle. But I wanted to show you this idea here as far as making the inner circle for these. Uh, if, if you didn't like the pin idea, maybe the uh, cardboard trick will be better. Okay, so we've got our U came all formed up here. Here's our joint right here. So we're going to go ahead and solder that. And I'll probably take and rotate this disc over here just to line up with one of these joints. We'll mark our up and down for where we're going to drill our holes for our brass tubing to go through here again because this is a part of our spinner we'll want to have the uh, the brass tubing going through here so uh, I'll uh, go ahead and uh, get that done and we'll get this one all put together and then uh, at the end of the video we'll show you how we're going to put them together uh, where we are going to uh, put uh, Pantene on these uh, or patina, however how you want to pronounce it. Anyway, they were, this is the one we're going to use. It's a black. It's for uh, solder and lead, and uh, that'll uh, turn our lead all either kind of a charcoal gray or black, and uh, it makes the glass pop really well. So that we are going to use that. So uh, anyway, we'll be back when we get these all put together, and uh, we'll uh, go ahead and uh, go from there. This outside, uh, the inside. The inside one done here and then we'll build the little tiny one inside and I'm going to do the same thing with it I made a, a circle here that I'm going to cut out of the cardboard uh, it's three inches in diameter I'm going to do the same size for that one that we build for the inside one so just another little tip I wanted to throw in here so when we come back uh, we'll have all the circles made and all right we're back so now we're going to take our uh, piano wire this is our 332 piano wire or music wire uh, we're going to use a pair of pliers that they use for making loops and we're going to go ahead and we're going to make a loop on the end of here and we're going to put a ball bearing swivel on it so this wire is too strong to try to bend cold so we're going to take a propane torch uh, just a standard propane torch and we're going to put our wire in here we're going to heat up a nice bright cherry red and then we're going to take it and we'll put it in our our pliers here and we'll bend it around now this is going to take uh, a couple tries so as far as getting it going because the the wire cools off quite quick especially when you put a pair of pliers on it so we're going to come back here about three quarter to an inch and we'll come back and get it nice and hot here and the first bend we're going to make is going to be we're going to use the biggest biggest loop here on our uh, on our pliers 
So I'm going to set it in here and I'm going to bring it up here. I'm going to put it in the pliers right here. And I'm going to bring this down just like that. And I'm going to bring up the end of it here again. Here again, we're going to get this heated up again. This takes a little bit of work to get this done. I'm going to put this in here again. Come on around. So the redder you can make it, make it, the easier it is to bend it. So we're going to really heat it up red here right now. Okay, so we've got a, got a nice circle started here. We want to be careful, though. We've got to remember we've got to get our, uh, our swivel in here. So I'm going to just close that up just a little bit more. And then we'll go ahead and we'll get our swivel in here. If you're not filming this, you want to do it. You can do it yourself. You can actually stick your pliers in here while it's hot and bend it down. So we've almost got it where we want it right there as far as getting it close to being closed up. So we'll make sure we get it hot, heated up here real good. Okay, so that's just about as close as we can get it there. So let me get my swivel and put on here. So I've got my swivel on here. Now I'm going to heat up this, edge, this, this tip right here. And we're going to roll that on around in there and close that off. So I appreciate my wife coming out here and helping us. So thank you, wife. You're welcome. <laughs> so anyway, so we're going to come in right here. We'll get this real hot here. I'm going to stick this in here and we're going to close this right up. That makes a closed loop right here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to come back right here and we're going to kink this back up so that the center of this loop is going to be in up and down or parallel to this line right here. So we'll get our swivel out of the way here and we'll take and we're going to take it right about here and just keep and we'll heat this up real red. And on our pliers here, we're going to use like the smallest loop on it to straighten that back up. All right, here we go. Put this right in here. And we'll get that to bend up like that. So if we did that right, that's just about right, right, right there. So I'm going to make this circle just a little bit straighter. I'm going to pull this back just a little bit. So it'll be a little bit straighter.
There we go. That looks pretty good. So we'll call that a good one. So that won't be coming out of there anytime soon. So now we'll go ahead and we'll uh, get all set up to assemble our vertical spinner and we'll be all done with it. So uh, we'll be back in a minute. Okay, well, we're back. We got to all of our pieces done now. We've got them all polished up and taken care of here as far as the cleanup goes and so forth. So now it's time to go ahead and we're going to go ahead and we're going to uh, assemble this. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to take our down rod. This is the one with the piano wire. We put the loop on it here with our ball bearing swivel. Uh, we're going to put a set collar right at the top of it. And then what we're going to do, we're going to take it, we're going to insert it here at the top. And we're going to bring it down right here. We're going to take and put a set collar right here. Now we're going to bring in our next ring. Set it in here just like this. It comes on down. We're going to put another set collar in here. These set collars are so we can adjust the center point of this. We'll put the last ring in here. And it goes on through here into the other side. Put another set collar here. And it's going to go into the other side of the middle ring on down. Put a set collar right here. It's going to go down in here. Get it lined up with the hole. Here we go. Got to get it in here. There we go. Comes on through. Okay, now down here at the end here, we're going to do two things. One, we're going to put a set collar here. Push it through here. This one here, the set screws out or in too far, so it won't let it go on the shaft. So on there. Now I have this little decorative ball I'm going to put on the end of it. I've taken, I've drilled out the hole right here. And I've drilled it out large enough now so I can put a set collar on here. And just lift this up. I'm going to put a set collar right on the end of it. I'm going to take my Allen wrench and put in the set collar right here. I'm going to put it, see if I can get out of the way here. I'm going to put this right here on the very end. And I'm going to make it go flush with the end. I'm going to bring my Allen wrench right to the top here and I'm going to tighten that up really tight. Just like that. Get it in here. These are really, really small set screws. There we go. This is going to slide down over that. This one here is going to go right here. You can tighten up that set screw. And then what we're going to do is going to push this dish all the way down. I'm going to take and center this. That looks pretty good right there. Here again now we're going to take this, this set collar right here. Just going to line up the set screws here. Tighten that up. Take and center this one here. Right there looks good. Take your set screw and put it in here. Take your time doing this. Get it lined up where you want it. Now 
Okay, this set screw here can go right there. That's fine. These two set screws here, you could actually leave those out if you didn't want to put them in here because they, uh, they're not bearing any weight. All the weight's been bear <coughs> bearing down here at the bottom of these right here. But we'll, uh, we'll just go ahead and tighten these up anyway. Put this last one right here at the top. If these little set collars look familiar, if you watch the one where we made the mobile, we use these set collars on the wire for the mobile, and this is the same wire that we use for that. So uh, that's why they look, look a little familiar to you. Um, this top one here, I'm just going to bring it down here until it just touches. I don't want to bind this up because I want these to turn freely. So I'm going to hold that right there. I'm going to just kind of bring it up to touch it and back it off just a little bit. I'm going to take and tighten that up. All right, so if we've done this right, these guys should turn inside each other just like that. So this is our vertical spinner. So we'll take this outside and hang it in the breeze. Uh, probably for our video here, I'm going to just take and put it on a mechanical spinner. But this is what it's supposed to do. These are supposed to turn real freely. Uh, this one here can go backwards if you want it. And uh, so uh, we got everything lined up. If they don't spin freely like that, that means we didn't get it quite lined up right. And uh, uh, sometimes you can mess around with it and get it to uh, go smooth. But uh, in this case, it came out very nice for us. So we'll go take this uh, outside, hang it up in the patio. We'll get a few shots of it and the video will be all done. I hope everybody's been following along. I'm real happy with the way it came out. So we'll, here's a little area that needs a little clean it up right here. We'll take care of that. And uh, we'll be back for the final video. All right, well, we're out in the back patio now. We've got our, uh, this is our vertical spinner, our vertical lollipop spinner. So as you can see, uh, I've got on a mechanical spinner right now, but uh, this spinner actually, uh, in a light breeze, actually does turn. So uh, some, most of the spinners, uh, unless they've got a pretty good breeze, don't turn. So I hope everybody's been following along on this video. It's been a fun one to make. It's not really difficult other than to be sure you get your wires lined up with your brass tubing. And uh, so I hope you'll please subscribe to my channel. If you have any comment, just send me a, a comment and I'll get you a reply back. So again, thank you for watching my uh, YouTube channel and we'll see you on the next project.